Welcome back, guys. There is never a dull moment. No, I'm not. sure that you guys can relate to having all kinds of stuff going on in life at one time. Mm -hmm. We've been making great progress with the finishing that we're putting on the walls and the A-frame. You're going to see that video later on this week. Mm -hmm. But first, we uh, became aware of a pretty serious electrical issue that came up down at the rental property that we own. Yes, we got to take care of that thing immediately and hopefully it helps some people seeing how we're doing it. So we're verifying we have no power. I'm reading from each leg. Together we should read 240 volts. We have nothing. We're checking to the hot to neutral. We're showing nothing. Hot to neutral again on this side, nothing. So this panel is de-energized, so we are safe to work on this thing. This right here is actually a square D, NEMA 3R panel. It's a home line style breaker. So this main breaker is correct. It fits properly. Going over here, this right here is a square DQO breaker. It's the wrong breaker for this panel. It just falls out when you touch it. They managed to make that go in there. Sound like something just broke. Um, also, they managed to squeeze a Cutler Hammer CH style brick in here also. This stuff is not meant to go in this panel. Um, this thing's ratty, it's all beat up, it needs to be cleaned up. If you look down here, they have a GFI, I'm sorry, not a GFI out here, they have a standard receptacle out here that's not protected by a GFI. This right here is a huge code violation. Um, this is how people get electrocuted and die. So, we're going to change this entire thing out real quick. So, looking at your wires coming from your meter, you got your phase right here, this hot leg comes down, it goes to your main bus. This is your other leg coming down also, which goes there. So between those two lines, you have 240 volts. Your black with your white stripe is actually your neutral. It goes to your neutral bar right here, and it's also bonded with your ground. So I know if you're not in the States, I think in Europe you all do a little bit different, differently, but here in the States, it's code, it's required that you bond your neutral and your ground at the service. The first means of disconnect, it needs to be bonded together. And that's, what it, and that, that's correct right here. So you walk, looking over this right here, get your ground wire, number six, the way it looks, coming down, it goes to the ground rod that's sticking out of the ground right there. They have one ground rod in. Code requires a UFA ground, which is your concrete electrode ground. Um, this house does not have that, so we, we're not putting that in. Um, supplemental ground could be a water line, but the water coming in is actually well, so it's a poly pipe coming up, so I can't bond that either, so I'm required to put two ground rods in, that's gonna be good enough. We're gonna change the panel out, get everything fixed up, you get nice and neat and so do it right. We're not going to change this today. That means this requires me going inside the house and doing a bunch of stuff. I can't get in there today to do that. But we're going to go ahead and take care of the panel and also take care of the GFI issue. One more thing. I don't know how I missed if I did. But looking at this uh, GFI, it's actually going to a 2 pole 40. So they got a 12 wire going to a uh, 40 amp breaker. That's a no no also. So that's whole thing is going to get changed out. It's a complete another mess. Whoever did this should be ashamed of themselves, obviously. Yeah, it's a cutler hammer going on a square D. Good lows. Wow. Thank you. Look, we match. Yeah. <laughs> so any of you that saw the very first video that we ever posted on our channel, you'll remember I was sitting in the car and explaining to our family and friends um, what we bought, like what size the property was, where it was at, all those sort of little details that they were interested in hearing. And one of the things I was talking about was this rental property that we are down at today. So um, I had explained back then, but I know a lot of you probably haven't seen that very first video, that the reason we chose not to live down here and instead up in the RV is for a couple of reasons. One of the biggest reasons is that this chunk of the property is just too far from our actual build site. So if we were down here, we would have no eyes on the build. We would have no eyes on our livestock and it just, it would have been a real crazy juggling act with Ellie with her nap schedule and with sleeping at night because there's no way that she could have been napping down here and we could have been all the way up there working on the property wouldn't have worked with where we're at in the RV we're able to just bring a baby monitor out with us because the RV is right there next to the house so that was one of the big reasons and another reason is that it was nice having residual income coming in from the renters so this house was had nothing to do with our decision to buy this property it was purely that piece of the property up there where we're actually building at. That's where the dream is at, where our inspiration is at, and where we wanted to be. This house just so happened to be on here. So we didn't care that there was going to be no inspection when signing the contract. Um, we knew that we were just buying it basically like as is, and obviously it's a mess. <laughs> the old panel's removed. We've got the new panel installed. 
um, we installed a NEMA 3R panel that's ready for outdoor use. So it's going to get rained on and it's perfectly fine. So it's good for what it is. So we're going to go over to tying everything in and uh, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and tie the neutral in. This white wire right there, come down, it's marked white. It's going to be our neutral. So we'll go ahead and take this guy, we'll tie him into here. This right here is our neutral bar. It's also bonded to our ground bar right there. We're going to go ahead and sink this screw in and put our ground wire right there. We want to bond our neutral and our ground at our service. That first means a disconnect. See this right here is a black insulator on here. There's actually one bus bar going all the way through, so these two bars are bonded together, if you see that. We got to do that by code here in the States. It's different from, from Europe. I get it. But in the States, that's how we got to do it here. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we have our red wire. Got the stripe right here. We're going to tie this guy in. We'll take him down here. This will be our black wire right here. These are both our hot wires. So we'll take him to this 100 amp breaker. So if you're measuring voltage from your wires, you're going to have 120 volts from this leg to neutral or this leg to neutral. We have 120 volts. Take both these two together, you have 240 volts. Put our deox on here. For our aluminum wires, you gotta put this on there because they will oxidize and uh, corrode away over the years and turn to nothing. You have a big fire hazard on your hands. So you wanna do that, it helps it from oxidizing. I just bend it around, try to make it look as neat as possible. Put my finger where I want to cut it at. Hold that spot and snip it. Now I'll straighten it back out and put and phase it real quick. I'm phasing it red. And keep in mind, you only got to do this to aluminum wire. Not, not copper, just aluminum. So I forgot my inch and a quarter bushing. I didn't pick one up. I gotta go to town tonight when it gets dark to go get that before I tie this in because it's an inch and a quarter. It needs, it needs a bushing on it. Even though it is PVC, it needs a bushing. So I'm not gonna tie it in yet until I get the bushing, but we'll do a few other things real quick before I go. I got mounted with stainless steel screws. They're always a pain because they're not magnetic. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to come out the bottom with some car flex, we'll come down, do a loop, and come right in the bottom of the panel and get the GFI installed. A short little run to push these wires through, um, bend them over. It, it helps them from not, I guess, the, the jagged parts at the end of the wire getting stuck. So have a nice round end on it, makes the wire go through a lot nicer. So now we're going to start our GFI. You can't use any standard GFI like you have in your kitchen or bathroom outside. It has to be a WR rated one. It's going to say WR right there. It means weather resistant. You have to have these outside. The inspector will come through. He'll check that. If it's not WR rated, he'll make you tear it out. And every once in a while, you'll come across somebody who puts a standard receptacle in outside like this. And they'll say they'll put it on a GFI breaker. It's not good enough. Can't do that. It needs to be one of these WR rated. This is unacceptable. This wasn't even on a GFI though either. Box is bonded. Um, now it's time to hook everything up. You see right here, you have a line side and a load side. The line side is where your feed comes in and feeds the GFI. The load side is for another receptacle that's down the line that's actually not a GFI, but this device will make that device act like it's a GFI. So it's GFI protected also. But if it's outside, it needs to be WR rated. So is our neutral. 
So that's right there, it says in the back, hot, white's your neutral, and then you got your ground goes to your green right there. All right, and now it's not upside down. <laughs> and that's what I'm gonna say something. Um, this old cord right here, used to have a ground pin right there, it's obviously gone, so the cord's no good, or the end of it is. It goes like this, when you plug it in, and if something does happen, hang like that, the only thing that's exposed is your ground. That's why you put them in like this. Typically, you see in a lot of households, they're the opposite way, but in commercial construction, we always put them in pretty much ground up. And this is the in-use cover, so you have to have these on out here. I can't have the old flip covers that come out and I plug in because if it's raining, it's exposed, it's getting water on there. With this in-use cover in, you can use it while it's raining. So you plug it in and it closes. It's weather tight. No water is going to get in there. So I'm going to kind of ground in real quick. I haven't done my, my uh, ground rods yet. I'm going to do that next. Put those in and want to ground this too. But for now, it's because it's done real quick. Ground's in, it's tied in. Good. Do our neutral. My neutral in real quick. So I got 12 wire going into my 20 amp breaker. That's good. This old UF cable, if you look right here, it's all deteriorated and everything. I'm gonna have to change it out. I'll cut that, that stuff off and get it in here. I'll probably cut it down to here. But working with an old UF cable, it's a complete and utter pain. Typically, it could take you like a couple minutes to uh, take some wire and tie it in real quick. This will probably take me 20 minutes to cut this stuff off, so it's nice and neat. So we're tying in for the wall pump right now. This goes to the pump, it's 240 volts. Each leg is 120 volts, you have the 240. So you have 240 volts going to the pump. So if you remember in the other panel, this red goes to the uh, ground bar and you're using the red as the ground. Typically you use your bare as your ground, but it's cut off on that end. This part was cut off too, or blew off. So both, both sides were cut off. So now I'm gonna take this right here that's being used as the ground on that side where the uh, pump is. I'm gonna go ahead and skin the insulation off this guy and make him bare copper so he looks like a ground and uh, he will be made my ground. My, my new ground for my pump. This was, the, this was, I guess, the original ground that blew up and they cut off on both sides. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bond it real quick so it's bonded just in case, you never know pretty much replace all this stuff. I'm trying to pretty much put a band-aid on by replacing this old panel and get these breakers fixed up. But a lot of this stuff needs to be replaced over time. At least for now, everything's nice and neat. The panel's good, got all the breakers match. There's nothing leaking. Um, the wire size is on the correct size breakers. Um, the GFI is covered up. It's, a, it's now a GFI, so this thing here, is, it's, it's so much safer now the way it is. But from out of here, going back out, it's gonna eventually be replaced. I'm gonna have to crawl underneath this house, replace this old pipe. Um, I'm sh I have no idea, I haven't been under there. I'm not sure if it stops right here and then free airs underneath the house. I have no idea. So I gotta check it out. I'm gonna replace it over time. How am I supposed to watch my face with you slamming that thing down? Keep your face back and hold it. I'm, I'm, I'm good at this. I mean, if you always act like it's your first time, you know what I mean? It's not. But you always act like you're good at it, and you're not. <laughs> that was good. It's getting dark, so I'm gonna put the last ground rod in real quick. I'll take everything, close it all up, and be back here tomorrow morning to put the bushing on, tie the rest of the panel in, and uh, put the wire down for the ground rods, and we should be done.
put our acorn on our ground rod. We ran our ground wire through there, pinch between the acorn and also the ground rod. You do not want to take your, your wire and put it on this side where the bolt goes screwing into the rod itself. Ground rods are connected. This right here is why I went to the ground rods. We're gonna go ahead and take it to our lug on our ground. We'll crank this down. And then uh, since this is a service, we gotta take this green ground screw right here. We gotta screw that so it bonds the can itself so this entire thing is bonded properly. So our neutral and our ground, they're bonded. They're supposed to be bonded in your main service coming from your meter. It needs to be uh, bonded, the first means of disconnect right here. So it's all bonded, said and done. All right, so got my inch and a quarter bushing. This needs to go on, guys. Um, I know it's PVC. Uh, when code doesn't specify what type of fitting it is, it says as long as it's an inch and a quarter or larger, it needs to, have to be bushed for the bushing. So, um, yeah, put it on. It doesn't specify like metal, steel fittings or anything like that. All it specifies is an inch and a quarter or larger. So, we got to put it on. Now that it's on, and that my mess up for the day is done, I can go ahead and tie this guy in. Looking at our panel here, right above it, we have our meter. Come from the load side of the meter, comes down this wire, ties into a 100 amp main breaker. This is what's gonna feed the panel here. Dropping down a couple spaces, we have a two pole 30 amp breaker, which we're gonna use as a spare. We have a single pole 20 amp breaker. Below that, it's also a spare. Below that, we have a two pole 60 amp breaker, which is gonna feed the house. Originally, this house was on a 100 amp breaker. This wire size isn't rated for 100 amps, so we had downsized to a 60 amp. Um, the wire size is good for that. This house, the only thing that really draws anything inside this house is the water heater. The range is gas, the furnace is actually oil. So, it doesn't draw much. On this side right here, we have the uh, well pumps on two pole 20, and we have a single pole 20 right here, which is controlling the GFCI we installed. And down below, it looks like a breaker. It's actually not, they're actually feed through lugs that we can come off and feed another panel, which is actually controlled off this main breaker here. So let's get this thing wired up. Now that the panel's wired up and up to par, um, other panels awful so it's fixed it's changed it's so much better it's nice it's safe everything is good um next thing we gotta do we gotta put the dead front on uh go ahead and take this and we gotta label everything this is where aaron has to come in and she really shines really good compared to me uh my penmanship's not very great not good at all it's not pretty bad great. yeah neither's my grammar <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> she's gonna go ahead and fill this out and uh we'll label everything close it up and we're done um there's a few things i still need to deal with this house um I gotta replace this pipe coming up. I didn't get, not get into it today. I got probably gotta dig a new, new trench, put a new pipe in, new wire, new everything. It's gonna be too short. The way it is, it's it's bad. So for now, this portion's done. It is safe. And uh, if you guys like videos like this, we're always fixing stuff, doing stuff, and we're not recording anything. Pretty much all we record is the house build. If you want us to show more of the stuff we do around the farm, and everything like that, let us know and uh, see what happens. And I'm happy to take one for the team here. Thank you. You're welcome. So the main is labeled, everything else is labeled. You can see where Aaron cared. We start this way, she started working down this way, we started caring less because her penmanship was at 110%. As it got down here, it got down to 60%. I'm not sure what happened there. She went and drank, and I promise, but. I got hungry. It's there you go. Time. All right, now so it's on real quick, we're done. This is day three down at the rental house since there was no inspection and no walkthrough that the contract for our property up there was pending on. Um, this is going to actually be our first opportunity to get deep into the house, see what it looks like, what the condition of the house is, which mm -hmm. is looking pretty grim just judging by the uh, state that the panel was in. Yeah, I mean, the main reason why we didn't get inspected when we were, I guess, put a contract on the property, the real estate agent talked to the other agent and said the owner is going to do zero repairs on the house. Mm -hmm. So we knew 
we're not living in this house. Um, we didn't buy this property for this house. We've never spent any time down in this house. So we said, okay, there's no point of wasting what 500 bucks on an inspection. So we didn't get one. There's no we, reason we to were going to buy it regardless. Correct. Because that's what we wanted up there. And this was basically just what came along with it. So it, it was what it was. Yep. So, and the renter stayed for, for about two years. Yes. It was like a residual income for us. So it, it, it was nice. Yeah. But now that they moved out, we got it and we have an inspection to do ourselves. Yes. And uh, judging by the way everything is outside, I see exposed wires out there. that's not supposed to be exposed. And I mean, it's not even Romex. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's THHN just traveling on the backside of the house going down the ground. So it's a mess. Yes, so we're not really sure what the plan is going to end up being um, for this area down here. It, we'll see. It basically like self-built the front area of it. It's not even really like a house. I mean, it's, can you say it's a house? No, it's, it's a uh, trailer with an addition built onto yes, it. Yes, look. it looks um, a little bit sketchy from what we're seeing. I don't know if you can tell, but this whole ceiling comes down to big old hump right here. It goes back up, so it's like this. This is the addition. So yeah. this is the self-built on part, like this main room, and then there's one other bedroom area. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, there's no heating. There's no heating or AC or nothing on this portion of the house. You gotta heat this place with the wood stove. But like I said, there's actually no air conditioner in this house either. This place right here makes our RV look very like bright and airy and open and much more comfortable, actually. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it might end up needing to be a, a teardown. It's something that we rebuild a place that we could eventually use as a rental house. We don't we'll really see. know yet. So let's look at it. Let's get inspected and let's just dig through it see what it looks like. Okay. It's obviously not level. I'm walking downhill this way. It looks like that way it goes up even further. So we'll see. There's no power in here. I got the bathroom. Where's the water heater at? It's like a six inch drop from here down to the end of this room. Not that much, but it's a, it's a huge drop. That's obviously money pit down that house. Um, the panel is fixed up, uh, so it's safe. No issues with that, but going through the house, I mean, it's not worth dumping any money into that thing, in my opinion. Yeah, what do you think? Not, not, and we also just don't have the time. Our focus is on, on the house and yeah. growing the farm, so we don't really have the time to be pouring into that house to get it to where we would feel comfortable putting anybody else as... Back in there. Yeah. Yeah, so who knows? I might run an excavator one of these months and uh, make a video with that thing. It'd be a good time, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just claw it down and put it in a dumpster. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks. See ya.